Um, all right, I, I hit record. So I, I guess today we're gonna um, hear about image analysis, um, some pain points and lessons learned from Yisan and Jean-Karim Harish. Um, apologies for messing up your names. Um, do you wanna, I think screen sharing is enabled, so do you wanna just take it away? Yeah, so yes, I think a few points on, on slides, but really to to give some context, um, it's we started looking for um, solutions to provide access to workflows doing image analysis in an HPC and also in, in cloud environments as, as part of this uh, European project uh, called EOSC Life, which is European Open Science Cloud uh, for the life sciences. Um, and so, yeah, as part of um, the project, we want to unify some of the ways we run um, computational biology um, tools and workflows. And so that meant, as many people were already using galaxies, that meant we wanted to actually bring image analysis to, um, to galaxy. So yeah, if you have some slides. Uh, yes, I'm trying to share a screen. So can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I should hit present. So I, I'll just keep my uh, talk short so we have more time for discussions. Uh, as JK just mentioned that uh, here's uh, some uh, background about uh, the EOS Life project and what we're trying to do. So basically we're trying to move uh, the uh, tool, software tools and workflows into the cloud uh, because we uh, actually represent one of the uh, research institutes uh, uh, within the EOS Life project. Uh, so we represent uh, Eurobio Imaging. So for us, basically we uh, try to move all the imaging uh, tools and image emerging workflows uh, into the galaxy as Galaxy is uh, the uh, selected uh, technology platform for us. So uh, just a little bit uh, of what we are currently doing and what we have already done. So uh, we had some uh, good, good and not so good experience with Galaxy, uh, especially uh, from the uh, tools, the development point of view. And then we try to create a cell profiler and cell posts so we made a uh, cell profiler version uh, three already in the Galaxy U public instance. And then we're currently working uh, on making version four available. Uh, we have some uh, problems and which I will explain a little bit uh, in more detail in the next slides. Also uh, similar experience with cell post. So we spent some time uh, trying to create a wrapper for cell post make it available and then uh, we didn't uh, uh, make it. So we instead create a container and then put it in a bio container. So uh, the bio container is already uh, in the repository, uh, but the uh, cell post uh, Galaxy PR is remain uh, unsolved. So, uh, so I'll use this two, uh, two uh, software uh, to explain uh, our uh, experiences. So firstly, uh, for example, with the cell profiler version four, because version three and version four is quite different. So, and then a cell profiler itself has about more than 90 modules. So for the version three, we make about 19 modules available in a galaxy. So um, some workflows may not be compatible uh, between versions. So um, the first thing with, uh, with the uh, cell profiler for version four tools is that uh, based on the feedback from the PR that there's some Galaxy security issues which prevent us uh, creating the tool. Uh, so, uh, and we tested uh, everything locally and then we got a green uh, light for everything. But when we trying to deploy it, uh, we actually get some errors uh, from the CI testing. Uh, currently, we don't, uh, we're not sure how to resolve it. So. And the next one is about the, the pain points about the channel restrictions. I think uh, from the technical side, and then it's all up to the uh, admin to uh, enable disable channels. But uh, 
for us, so when we're creating the cell post uh, uh, contact recipes, so the uh, when we're creating the cell post recipe itself, it, create, it depends on another one. So we have to create a, the dependency first. And then because the this dependency uh, is not from the Galaxy approved channel, but it's already available in somewhere else. So basically uh, what we do, we just copy that thing and then move it to the uh, Galaxy allowed channels and then adding some metadata and then claim ourselves as a maintainer. So this is what we do. And then the third one is like, uh, because we working a lot with uh, micro, uh, microscopy images, and then some of the formats, it just not, uh, not we're not able to view it within Galaxy. Um, so, I, I mean, our questions for the first two, uh, is quite similar. The first two questions quite similar. So whether that, that it's possible to uh, like specify the uh, contact channels uh, in the like uh, tools XML wrapper instead of admin doing that. Uh, uh, so because if the admin don't allow that, basically we would do a lot of copy and paste. So, but if this can be specified from the developers and then that would be a lot uh, useful. So for example, for PyTorch, NVIDIA, and then the recipes in these channels are quite reliable, but because uh, for instance, uh, Galaxy EU don't allow this. So then we need to uh, move this. And then the uh, third question is, uh, and, and the third and fourth are quite, uh, is the same. So uh, in case that we have a, we have issue like the cell profiler version four, which we cannot proceed anymore. And then should we uh, just switch to containers because not every HPC uh, support Docker or uh, containers. So if we go with that, and then uh, how do we, I mean, make a tool around that Docker because it's not a, a recommended best practice for Galaxy. So uh, if we create the tools around containers, are we allowed to just uh, install anything in the container? So, and another question is that, uh, so because Galaxy and me restrict the channels, uh, if the thing's not in the channel, basically we can create a container and then to work around that, to install Conda within the container and to use whatever channel we want. So is this the uh, right way uh, to go ahead? Uh, that's the uh, second question. And the third one is, so if uh, containers are uh, allowed in the Galaxy, are there any uh, like, uh, uh, container repositories uh, we must use. So BioContainer is one, maybe Docker Hub and K.I.O. And then what about singularities? So uh, where do we deposit our container recipes if we have a singularity one? Um, the, the, uh, so this one, the uh, keep debugging or go with container is quite, is, as I already uh, explained. So in case the problem like that, so which way to go? And the last one is the dependency. So this is mainly about uh, Conda recipes. So uh, as I understand, uh, we should not pin the software version in Conda recipes as little as, uh, as possible. But uh, we found which uh, what is more uh, useful is to try to pin every software in a specific to a specific version. So we can always uh, recreate the same environment. Uh, one example is the is still with the cell profiler because when we create a cell profiler uh, recipe, it was still version three, and then later the uh, BioConda bot just automatically update to version four, and then now if you create something uh, based on the version four recipe, it will not work because uh, one of the dependencies uh, has a more advanced version, it's a NumPy, uh, it uses the latest one, but I think the cell profiler four only worked with the older one, so. Uh, things like this version things is quite uh, complicated to solve. Um, because uh, this, uh, the, this is actually the last slide. So it's based on the questions what we think or what would be nice to have, or um, maybe from the Galaxy developers, you can implement something by default. So as a tool developer, we don't have to, we don't have to worry uh, a, lot, a lot. So, um, uh, the first one is the channel stuff. So, the, and then the second one, so uh, be, uh, I can understand the Docker is not a uh, like a recommended way, but uh, still there will be cases that we need to create a tool around Docker, whether we can have more uh, examples. So now what we're doing is like 
uh, we want to search example, we go to the development document, try to search the, uh, or go to the GitHub, try to search the keyword and then find a recipe and then try to uh, replicate the same thing. So, and the third one is the uh, S3 bucket from Galaxy. So what we need is, uh, so now if you want to run something based on image, basically you need to upload the thing to the server. So is there a way to access uh, S3 bucket directly from Galaxy without uh, writing the files to the Galaxy disk? Uh, and the uh, default container registries, as I uh, uh, explained in the early, uh, the previous slides. So uh, which which ones, so Docker, Hub, or Singularity repositories are, we should, we should go, uh, use. So the last thing is about viewing the uh, images. So, so currently, as we understand, one viewer, image viewer, they should associate with uh, certain file formats. So what about a viewer that uh, that's not depending file format. For example, uh, a viewer to view all the uh, images supported by uh, bio formats. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, all about it. So I guess we could uh, start our discussion. Yeah, um, I just yeah. want to to maybe maybe bring you a few a few more details. So. Um, yeah. Many of these tools, like Salpos, for those who don't know, are actually deep learning based. And, and so a number of the ones we are working with are, are like this, or some of them even a bit, bit more complicated. And so the dependencies and version problems are, I um, think, more pronounced with those type of tools. Um, and that's one thing. And, and again, um, we've, we're having a discussion with uh, Jeremy on, uh, in the chat about the image viewing. So what our um, users want is actually when they click on the small eye icon in the history uh, to be able to, to view the image directly and not having to go and open uh, an application um, separately for it, like going to the interactive uh, environment, for example. Or, or having to plug in some image viewer directly. Um, so yeah, so basically, and, and so one of the issues as if we understood that co correctly is that for images, uh, we need to associate each image format uh, with basically a tool. So it means creating 250 wrappers for the 250 image file formats that we're using. And we were thinking maybe if there was a way of having something that reads at least some of the most common image file formats without to, having to specify uh, um, each one each one as a as a special data, data type. So maybe maybe by basically having bio formats as a as an intermediate or um, maybe. Uh, so something else. so I, I don't know about Vitesse, um, but with definitely going to have a look. Um, thing is, some of those images that we're looking at are highly multidimensional. So I don't know, I don't know much about Vitesse. So I um, don't know if it's going to work on, let's say, uh, 5D images. So, um, and also, but basically, I mean, we have uh, all these questions. We are kind of new here to, to this. So maybe we have, and framed things correctly or misunderstood something. So feel free to enlighten us. Um, yeah, I mean, thanks for the presentation. I think there were some, some good points in there. And uh, um, I wanted to point out, and I am, I'm sorry if I missed this, but there are some channels where you can ask tool development related questions. And so I had a look at the pull request and it's something that is, I mean, it's it's trivial to to fix this problem that we yeah. have, um, but you know, so, if we don't see it, we can't do anything. Um, yeah. I mean, we've we've been talking to to Bjorn Grinning quite quite a bit. Um, but but Bjorn is just one person, but there's a much larger community, yeah, yeah. But right? also, I mean, occasionally on the on the channel, but they, they, I think some of these issues were basically not very satisfactory to us. I mean, he has been mostly dealing with this, but I, I think, for example, 
there is the main, the, the main issue of all basically building these tools with this um, dependency L basically where we would need to basically rebuild some conda packages for dependencies instead of reusing another channel that already has them. I mean, this is a good point. Um, and I think we're moving, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I shouldn't like personally, I, I would say I, I completely agree. And, you know, it was a good idea to not pin conda packages and to allow a restricted set of channels because if um, you go with an unpinned version of uh, top level dependencies over five or six channels, you will never be able to install anything. Um, and this is, I think, where containers are shining and singularity support is more common on HPCs these days. And singularity can just take Docker images, right? Um, so I think that's a, that's a good point. And maybe we need to elevate the status of containers a bit more. Um, in the chat, I linked the link to how you specify a container in a tool dependent, um, in a tool. Uh, so I think like, you know, I mean, we will not take this up in the IOC channel, for instance, because uh, we aim that anyone can install it. Um, also, if they don't have Singularity or Docker available, but it should be entirely feasible for you guys to actually host your own tools and decide that if you want to install this, you need Docker. I think that's perfectly a reasonable way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's basically kind of uh, the question where we, we kind of wanted to release things, but not necessarily always as a conda package, uh, especially when it takes a lot of time. So at least from, the, from our side, what happens is that um, those tools are, are wrapped or going to be mostly wrapped now by people who do um, image analysis as a service. So their primary role is not to actually wrap those things, but um, to, to, to help users run, run them. So what they do is basically, if it takes too long, they give up. And so we have, for example, Cellpose is running perfectly fine in our own Galaxy instance, but it's not in a state where we are, can release it on the tool shed. And that's basically kind of to illustrate the, the issue. So if we can basically release our container, the one that works for us, somewhere um, in, in one of the official uh, Galaxy things, uh, like the tool shed, I think that would, would also help. So that people yeah. know- I mean, I, I really don't yeah. think there is a problem if you just want to publish uh, tools that depend on containers. Um, as I said, like in the, the main channels, we're not going to do this, but um, we also want to have a thriving ecosystem and i agree like yeah. it's stupid to to work on dependencies for tools that maybe you didn't even develop um yeah completely agree yeah so, so yeah, just, just, just to like add, reiterate yeah. there there's there's no technical limitation right it's just yeah. you can publish you can just annotate the tool with the container and that container can you don't need to worry about repository right that container can come from basically anywhere um and then publish it to the tool shed yourself. And it, it, it should just work um, for people who have Docker or Singularity enabled. Okay. So maybe it was, it, it's a bit of a misunderstanding on, on our part because we're told like it should be conda packages. Yeah. So for Bjorn, I mean, because you, you, you attempted to give it to Bjorn's repository, right? And so he, he wants his tools, I mean, to have conda dependencies also, right? But that's not a that's not a framework limitation, right? That's just yep. that's that's the kind of tools he wants to have in that repository, and it's a sort of a, a social a social thing, right? A, a best practices thing. Um, so okay. for the for the um, singularity images or also Docker images, is there the recommended registry where to put those images at the moment? Um, I mean, if you are going to put explicit containers, uh, no, you can put anything you want. Um, if you put it on KIO, you need to include the KIO, just like you would when you do Docker run. But, um, yeah. 
Uh, because I'm asking, because with Conda, <clears throat> I guess it's quite safe to put dependencies there and anyone can install it, even in, I guess, now five years' time um, for the images if they go away, because we host them on our own, <clears throat> on our own registry. This might become a real issue. Yeah. I mean, but it's, you know, Anaconda could decide the same way that uh, they're not going to host old versions. So uh, we do run backups of all the bio containers. So that's one advantage. Um, so if you submit your um, container to bio containers, so we do have backups. Yeah. And I mean, what about this uh, CVM uh, FS? <laughs> I don't. CVM FS. <laughs> Yeah, so, so because you have a lot of those bio containers there, right? Yeah. Uh, but you cannot submit something directly there, I guess, because it's not a proper registry or or is that yeah, this this all that you're talking about. Um, so this all happens via um, the bio containers project. Um, and they have multiple repositories. So one starts out with um, conda dependencies. Um, as they are in, in the best practice channels. So that will not really work for the case where you want to use them from a different channel. Um, but then BioContainers has other initiatives uh, where you can just submit, um, I, I will link it here. You can just build Docker files for instance, right? So I put that in the chat as well. Um, yeah. So this is also how we make sure, I mean, this, this is the big advantage for us. If we say, um, please use Conda packages from uh, Conda Forge um, or the defaults channel uh, or Bioconda, um, then we generate the multi-package container and we can say, you know, as long as the tool is there, uh, you can install it via Conda and you can install it via uh, Docker or singularity. But if you only create like the Docker image, then that leaves out the portion of the administrators that can't run containers. I mean, that's that's the one limitation that's inherent if you go with containers only. I also forgot what there was one point um, that I think it was on the slide about um, Anaconda changing the terms of, uh, of use and particular for the default channel. Um, I mean, it's probably not a problem for many of you because you work in universities, but we've had issues in the past where, for example, the MBL wasn't recognized as a, an educational in institution. And again, in part, for example, um, partners of the um, EOSC Life project are so-called re um, research um, inf infrastructures. So they are... Um, definitely not educational institutions, um, but they, they, they provide various services and there would be some of them using those things. So um, it's unclear uh, now to us, and that's been pointed out to me that maybe we would not be, we shouldn't be uh, using the default Conda, Anaconda channel. Um, I mean, we're basically not, right? So if you are, have your packages in one of the best practice ones, it's usually a pro, I mean, it's usually an indication something went wrong if we fetch a package from the default channel. Most of the things are in Bioconda or Conda Forge. Yeah, but uh, it's just because it's been, I think it's been used by default in a number of things and including probably in some of the ways we've uh, put our Conda recipes. So um, do, do you think that we should basically remove it? I am, I am, I'm not familiar with the license restriction terms of service changes, so I can't tell you this. What I can tell you is that um, this shouldn't be a problem for the other content channels. And it's just you know an HTTP server. Anyone can run a Conda channel if they like to. Um, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the other channels are fine. As I understand, the, the, the problem is the default one. And, and I think there are a number of packages there as dependent that we use as dependencies because we didn't want to actually report them to uh, some others but maybe yeah i mean that, that's why we're recommending that you install things from conda forge 
because there's also, well, at least for Bioconda, we should only be accepting um, free open source uh, software licenses. Mm -hmm. I think there are some exceptions, but I mean, that's another thing that, you know, if an administrator activates just these channels on their server, then there is a pretty good chance that they will not be, you know, doing some accidental license infringements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing I want to I want to ask, uh, so uh, like what we did for the cell cell post bio containers, uh, so we build a container. Basically, we build uh, install Conda in the container, so that we can use any channel in the container. So that uh, how how do we avoid to accidentally use some some like uh, software channels which we are not allowed, but it's in the container and then it's already in the bio repository, but we use third party channels in the container. So which is not allowed in, in some of the Galaxy instance. So I didn't understand the question. So, so, so for, uh, because cell post, uh, we try, firstly, we try to create a recipe for cell post, and then it depends on a, uh, another package, which is not in the uh, kind of folder or BioConda. Uh, but we create a container, and then in the container, we install the uh, a Conda using the third party channel, so which has the dependencies in it. So, and then we deposit this container in the bio container. So we still use the uh, admin not allowed channel in the container, but we can build a tool based on this container. So basically we work around the channel restrictions with container. That should be fine as long as you uh, don't put there something that's not free open okay. source. Okay. Yeah. And that's bio containers problem. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it could limit the uh, uh, willingness of certain servers to obviously make that tool available if it's not available in Conda. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big, basically also what what we're basically why we are discussing these uh, container things is because we have trouble releasing things that are in Conda. Right. And, yeah. Uh, Presumably, your 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 end desire might be to get it on usegalaxy.eu or usegalaxy.org, for example. I would think. Yeah, so in particular for 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 teaching purposes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but we we also know of a few others, including um, uh, the one at Temple, which currently doesn't actually take containers. I mean, we we have workarounds because Yellow, who's here, is managing it. But um, otherwise, yes. Yes, I mean, this is, so I'm a little worried about uh, what change has happened to the default channel too, as far as licensing, because I haven't heard anything about this yet. So I don't know. It if... happened It happened a year ago, actually. Okay. Um, sometimes I think, uh, yeah, about a year ago. Okay. Um, let me see if I find the link. Yeah, if you have a link, that would be great. Just Because um... if Marius didn't know and I didn't know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't know. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I only heard about it uh, recently. Because the, the whole point of all of this is so that it's free for everyone, right? Like, like you're saying, yeah. the, the problem, you know, why, why we're so strict is we want it to be free for, you know, commercial, just and just the same as academic and nonprofit. Yeah. So if, if there's some change to Conda that makes it incompatible with that, we'll need to really investigate, I think. Um, I mean, let's see. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'll keep on <laughs> the discussion. I'll see if I find it quickly. Otherwise, I'll have to email it. Um, I mean, I think this might be about the Anaconda uh, distribution itself, which we're not using at all. Right? We're using Miniconda. Okay, no, but, but there was something that uh, involved the default channel as part of it. Yes, uh, the Anaconda distribution packages a lot of things from the default channel. But... Okay, I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, really deep into these things. I, it's something I, I was pointed to uh, recently and uh, Someone said that it could be a problem. And so I thought maybe you already knew about that and they, you had an opinion or uh, 
a way of dealing with it, but um, well, maybe it's not actually a problem. Um, I think this, these are the the terms of uh, of services, and I think it has to be about some of the interpretation of of those. Um, so basically, this is about their definition of. Uh, commercial activities and whether you're a non-profit research institution. And so, yeah, uh, it's just that uh, in, in other cases, it's very similar. We had, uh, we had issues that we were not uh, considered, at least in that case, that was educational. And for the research, the European research infrastructures, that's also unclear where they fall in, in that spectrum. Yeah, I think uh, anyways, this, this is I definitely just, something to look into deeper, but there is a difference yeah. between anaconda, conda, mm -hmm. and then, for example, mini conda, which is a distribution that contains conda um, and yes. allows you to use the packages, right? Yes, but, um, but someone but, said that uh, because the default channel is somehow anaconda or something is covered by, by this. I, I mean, I, I thought that maybe actually someone could enlighten me here <laughs> because you might have been around this more than me, but uh, it, it, it's fine. If nobody knows, it's and uh, I mean, I, I would encourage, I mean, like when no one here is a lawyer, um, but if you look for this, you'll find also some threads where the CEO of Anaconda responds and says, hey, this is only applies to the Anaconda distribution, which is not what we're using. And okay. anyway, this also is more people that, I mean, it's a different topic. I don't think it's really an issue. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go anyways at, at, uh, at seven uh, here local time anyways. But um, so before we run out of time, I want to, to discuss a little bit the um, image viewer so to clarify what we are after or our users are asking us is that when you click in the eye icon in the history, um, you should be able to see um, the, the, the corresponding image. So they should give you access to some image viewer um, and that you, you, you shouldn't, I mean, yeah. I mean, the way we've looked at it is that it needs, the date it needs to define a, a data type based on the file format, like I understand it. So if you want to open a, a, a TIFF image, you need to define to associate an image viewer with TIFF. If you want to open, um, uh, I don't know, an HDF5 uh, type of image, you need to define uh, also this as the data type. Is that correct or can we have a generic uh, image data type and then have a viewer that has opens those without having to generate many types. I think that's, I don't know what this, does anyone want to take that question? I mean, what Galaxy does with the eye icon is mostly to display what a browser can display. So TIFF files should be fine. SVGs are not displayed because they could be malicious. 
but you well, know you can turn that on and off thief, thief are not okay i mean uh unless there has been a recent change to to browsers that uh, they don't they don't know how to open tiff files by default so pngs and jpegs are okay but at least when when we tried we couldn't for tiff files but then there are like many other image file formats so what, what so the idea was to have an image data type and that it would be read by bioformats, which basically is a, a universal converter, and then displayed into um, a, a, a generic image viewer that we can pull from various places. Yes, that, that would be based on JavaScript, basically. Yes, so, I think that's a, that's a good idea. That is probably the direction that we're heading in. We're currently sort of wrapping up the the work on the new history and i think then it should be relatively straightforward to augment i mean to to take the visualizations out from the special menu and say provide also you know with the eye icon that you can access visualizations this way um i think that's maybe what would help you well i mean definitely i mean so, so but uh, so the, the what What's still not entirely clear to me is whether there is, uh, or, or how it works. Basically, because as I understand it, you have you have to define a data type to associate with a viewer. So, is this like an external website that can take like a URL and then it will view like display the images or no we were thinking of uh, something integrated in uh, in galaxy where so you click on the eye icon and if the data is an image the it will basically be viewed in a in a javascript viewer and the format shouldn't matter because it would should be dealt with transparently underneath yeah so you could pretty much do this now if you wanted by extending the like an image data type like you said and have the display method for that abstract data type that's implemented with all these other the actual extensions just show a visualization instead of try to uh, show the image in the browser there are exist I'm, i was trying to find an example but i'm on my phone here unfortunately um so we do this sort of with bam files right we yeah display them as sam files when you click on the eye. Well, that's on the back end, right? We wouldn't want to do this. I mean, it's it's because Galaxy comes from the sequencing world that yeah. we were okay with this. But um, yeah, I mean, something similar, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, but so basically, at least if we run bioformats, so this is the, the this converter, it, has, it would have to run on the back end. Yeah, I'm not familiar with bioformats. Um, well, it's basically um, a universal converter. So basically, the the bioformats people have basically reverse engineered many image file formats, and so this thing can read basically. Yeah, people are putting links in the in the chat. Um, most image type data types or image file formats that are out there. So I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we don't actually want necessarily all of those, but at least the most common ones that uh, people might have um, around. And and for the, the 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 viewer, basically, want something that at least is able to deal with the at least five D five dimensional images, so X, Y, Z, time, and channels. So bioformats is a Java 8 software. Yeah, so the, the, the primary library is, uh, is Java, and then it's been wrapped in many other uh, languages. OK, so it has bindings, for example, for Python and so forth. Yes, there's Python, there's R, um, MATLAB, a couple others, I think. Yeah, I mean, if 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 there is if there are bindings to Python, you could do this today, just writing a custom display method, um, and you could serve like if you. I, I'm I'm still not sure exactly where 
where the line is between what you want to do on the back end and what you want to do on the front end is visualization. Um, well, so, so, go ahead. Well, on the back end, I, I guess that would be reading the image and um, with bioformats, converting it into something that can be displayed um, uh, on the web. So um, for something I've done, let's say for a shiny app is that I read um, the images with, with bioformats, convert those into a bunch of, um, of, of pink um, for let's say each slice or each time point. And then I have a JavaScript um, uh, viewer that actually takes those and, and, and displays them. Got it. Um... But that's a little bit cumbersome, but maybe that's the, the way to go for now. Uh, if you're not worried about cumbersomeness, we could define a converter tool for bioformats that takes in these image files and creates an actual bioformats output file that the user could then click on a link to view. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, that's one way to do it. Yeah. But, but that, that would mean that uh, the users would, would have to, to put that in their pipeline, basically. Well, if it's an... If it's a built-in converter, then they wouldn't. You wouldn't necessarily have to show that. You could you could do it automatically, right? Yes. Yeah. We we could uh, in in the dis yeah. So I mean, in the display application, we could free route to either uh, you know a locally hosted JavaScript viewer or a you know a JavaScript viewer built out someplace else, but actually build the conversion into the the actual display application, so it runs in, uh, natively as a job, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, I mean, the smoothest way, obviously, if you just want the eye icon to work, um, you know, you'll have to do you'll have to do something on the back end too. Yeah. Um, I mean, that this is basically um, I think a major usability request we've had from people doing image uh, work. Yeah, Marius. I mean, what Marius outlined in terms of you know once the new history is done, rewriting the eye icon to sort of be a visualize this in any number of ways button yeah. um, is is definitely in the next couple of quarters on the roadmap. Um, but if you wanted to do this today, uh, it's, I it's, mean, it's 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 not uh, urgent, but uh, yes, within maybe let's say within a year, we would really like to, to yeah. be able to to have something like that. So, so what 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 would be the suggestion here? Should we wait for the new um, A three with the new I icon? Is that? Because then also, I, I, if you are going to change it, I, I think uh, it probably is a waste of uh, time to, to do something that may not work in newer versions. Well, I, I mean, we would have a migration path for, for the existing stuff, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, it really just depends on how quickly you want, want it yeah. done. Well, I mean, the, the the new the new feature sounds actually quite uh, quite easier maybe for us. I don't know. Oh. So JK that... also to um, to clarify. So the the tools like for example Selpos or other tools that would actually output an image, mm -hmm. they would the wrapper would actually make them already in a bio format or would they still spit out a normal image format and then you want Galaxy, so to say, to, to figure out what to do with it? Yes. If it, if, because if all the, all the tools already make bio formats and then you can... No, but bio know. formats is not a format by itself. It's just a library that understands uh, 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 hundreds of different file formats. And, and can, can to a limit, some extent, convert between them. Or typically, it's used for reading um, all these different formats and outputting a few uh, different ones, most, most often used for OMETF uh, output. But uh, 
can output slightly different. So it's a kind of a universal file form at converter for images. So, so um, you mentioned like 250 different like image types. Is that maybe something, you know, that we can support as uploads into Galaxy? But then once you, I mean, I guess you will, as a user, you wouldn't upload an image to Galaxy just to see it, right? Um, no. You would do some transformation on it. Um, and so is it maybe a reasonable thing that at each step of your pipeline, you would produce something that is, you know, relatively standard conformant, or is that something that would lose too much information? Well, it, 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 yeah, there are multiple situations here. Um, so uh, in, in the most uh, recent cases, what people wanted to do is look at the segmentation mask. So you, you produce the, um, you, you get some, let's say, cells as input, and you want to, to extract the nuclei of the cells. So the, the segmentation mask is basically the, the nuclei um, that, uh, that have been identified. And so people would just to have a quick look, like, how good has it been? Because um, they may need to change some of the parameters if they use already a, a pre-trained model, let's say, for the deep learning ones, like cell pose. Um, so they, they need to look quickly at, uh, let's say five, 10 images. And then at, at the next stake of the pipeline, if there's been some other transformation also. And so different tools will also output different, different formats, but, uh, in, in general, yeah, we would want to, to have something that works for, for everybody. But we can start by restricting to the most common formats. That's but it's just that bioformats does a lot. Yeah. You, so so I was going to say, I mean, so like uh, you mentioned TIFF specifically. Uh, are at this point, are there really a lot of different tools that you're working on that create things other than TIFF? Because if it's just TIFF, we should just add a JavaScript uh, TIFF viewer that just works with that display. Yeah, I was going to say there is Open Sea Dragon in Galaxy now. Um, that will you can view tips in. Yeah, so I, I had a look at Open Sea Dragon a, a, a while back. Um, one of the issues is that it doesn't do um, multi pages tips, or at least it's not easy to navigate through a stack. I, I, I at least I didn't see that uh, functionality. It was also the test C being mentioned in the chat. Is that something that? Um, so that I, this one I, I I don't know. So maybe Jeremy can can tell us. Sure, I can chime in. From a high level perspective, what I see is the need for three different things. Ideally, one is we need to have bioformats wrapped into Galaxy, and this may already be done. To be honest, I'm not sure. I should talk to my group and, and the Orange group in particular, because. And the reason I say this is Vitesse is built, well, one of the components of Vitesse is something called Viv, which is this multiplex image viewer. This viewer is tuned to OME tests in particular. So for whatever reason um, that goes beyond um, what I've been involved with so far, OME tests have become the standard for multiplex tissue imaging data sets in the United States and really across some large tissue atlas projects, including human cell atlas, HubMap, and the human tumor atlas are the three that I'm involved in that do this. So long story short, everything moves to an OME tip eventually, sometimes using bioformats. And then we use viewers that are based around OME tip, um, Napari on the desktop and on the web, Viv or Vitesse. And so I'm happy to share our pipelines, but what we have internally right now is we run our analysis pipelines, we get everything out from segmentation mass to marker intensities. Um, and then we build all of that into OMI TIFFs. And then we have these web-based viewers and desktop-based viewers that are working with OMI TIFF only. And this simplifies our lives considerably because we don't worry about anything else. And if we can do this in Galaxy, I think it's a huge win. Um, again, it seems like many of these tools that are coming around for these big tissue atlases, these single cell spatial transcriptomics and spatial proteomics are all using OMI TIFF at this point. 
with czar arrays to back them for the record. So we have a tool that builds these czar arrays, which are really handy, obviously, because then you can dynamically view these images. Yes. So if you look at Viv in particular and look at the demo, for instance, you can do this multiplex imaging. Time, not so much yet, but certainly you can view all the channels and you can even do slicing or move through a 3D volume. Yeah, thanks. So actually about ZAR, I mean, they, I don't know if you're aware of this um, effort to create an OME ZAR uh, specification so that actually many tools are also going to move into using uh, this as a kind of a next generation file format standard for images in, in, in the case. So we had actually, because I think Viv already implements the DAR uh, or can read ZAR. Um, so, so we had actually that at the back of our mind as a, as a possible viewer. But um, uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, we, we also want to have something that, uh, that goes a little bit beyond just do ZAR and OME TIFF because that our users also are very close to the microscope and sometimes the the things that they that they do is in various formats let's say we also have EM to, to take care of also we're doing EM as well um I I'm not necessarily arguing that Viv and Vitesse are the only solution here. I guess what I am arguing is that, number one, we should try to standardize on a format. For the projects I'm involved in, OME TIFF is what we do. And it seems pretty well supported. And it also seems to have a fair amount of traction in at least other places that we're going to care about. So the imaging data commons, for instance, that's being brought up by NIH is going to standardize on some form of OME TIFF. Um, they provide, um, for instance. I, I, I totally agree. And, and, and actually already having OME TIFF and, and, and TIFF in general would, would go a long way. Um, I'm just, yeah, just trying to get to some of the, the, the other things that I know are, are going to happen. And then I, as we can all appreciate, once you have something that you agree on in terms of a format, you can build lots of different viewers. To be honest, I'm not aware of too many web-based viewers for multi-channel images. And this is why Viv is attractive to us, is because it was easy to integrate into Galaxy. It works. Um, it works as a service. It works as a React component. Vitesse is the same way. And so it, it was the easiest for us to move forward with. The other thing about Vitesse, to be honest, is it's more than just an image viewer. It's a single cell interactive visual analysis dashboard. And that's really what we want. So. My group is not necessarily interested in the raw images per se, but we're interested in the downstream impact of that. So we care about spatial analyses, we care about clustering, phenotyping, all the stuff that comes after the primary image analysis. And Vitesse makes that so much easier. And it yeah. also gives us the raw image viewer for the microscopy folks that want to dive into it and look at cell segmentations, um, bleed over, for instance, nuclear segmentation versus cell segmentation and other such mm. things. No, no. I. I understand. I just think that, uh, well, I, I mean, we have some some single cell uh, uh, projects, but um, they are they are like more. I mean, in particular, I mean, we still have a high level of uh, screening, like high throughput screening activities yeah. that that uh, takes different forms and that can be. I mean, time lapse, also sometimes three D. Um, we, we, which basically I, we want to use Galaxy 4 because that's very much easier to parallelize in our cluster in, in that case. Um, but, but I mean, I, I think we, we have some, uh, some good pointers here, but I think what I'm taking home here is that maybe we wait for another six months for the history to change. And, uh, but in the meantime, we can look at, at Vitesse. Um, so Jeremy, is, is it available somewhere that we can at least try in our, or is it already in the public uh, galaxy? Um, if you send me an email, um, I can connect you with the developer who's been working on it. I am sure it's publicly out there on GitHub somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Okay. 
Yeah. And, and yeah, you're welcome to try it out. I think we've dockerized everything at this point, if it's helpful. Um, yeah. I, you know, Viv is in the main galaxy release at this point, as I pointed out in the chat, the test is not right now. Okay. But more eyes on it would be good because yeah. this pipeline has been incredibly effective for us moving from all the way from the raw image stack down to the point where we can do our single cell analytics. Mm -hmm. And Vitesse and Viv have become essential to us because especially working remotely, having to download images or, or sync them using Samba or something like that is so painful. And so these web-based approaches for visualization have really sped up our analyses considerably. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm afraid I will have to, to leave in a few minutes. So uh, just feel free to, to continue discussion if you, if you need to. Um, I, think, uh, I think I got quite a, a lot of information already. Uh, Yi, is that, did you get also yeah. some answers to your questions? I mean, I, I do think my final point is, I'm, unless I'm misunderstanding something, I don't think you need to wait for the new history for all of this to work. The test is a display application. To my understanding, display applications work in the current history as well as in the new history. And the test is actually a React component that we built into the tool. And as a result, you run a typical analysis tool in Galaxy using old history or new history, you get out this React component while this web page that includes the React component that you can click on and view. So I don't think the new history is a blocker for using either of these, unless I okay. misunderstand it, something. Yeah, it's definitely not. The, the only, the point there was that if you wanna be able to click on the eye and then have you know a variety of views for a data set or whatever, um, then that's, that's where that'll tie in. But yeah. just to visualize, no. Yeah, no, so, I mean, I think we've already seen, or at least I think I've seen the VIV tool uh, in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, having the, the, the eye is what some of our users are asking about because they, they say, yeah, it's nice. You can go and have a tool and, and things, but for quick browsing, the, the eye in the history is uh, what we want. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, it, it's almost as easy. It's just not the eye. It just shows up as a link when you expand the history item. It'll say view at like the events or something and you click okay. on that. Um, so it, it's, it, I guess it's one more click than clicking on just the eye, but so you have to expand the history item and then click on a link and then that'll show it to you, but it's pretty close. Okay. Yeah, I wonder um, if the distinction there is like, they didn't want to run a tool or something, right? Like it's, uh... sorry. Uh, I was wondering if the distinction there was that maybe they maybe they thought they needed to run a tool or something to visualize it or like it's it seems like those display applications are pretty easy to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea was yeah was what was where we had seen before is that you needed a special tool. So I actually what initially was happening is that uh, people would go to the interactive environment looking for the uh, for the tools for viewing images. Yeah, I, I would definitely try the 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 interactive or not. Sorry, the interactive environment, the display application that Jer Jer Jeremy was speaking about. So okay, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, we could do that. Um, is there is there an example of a of a visualization tool already implemented? We can look at IGV. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Well, I believe IGV is implemented like that, right? Okay. No, you, so you, I was going to say you could look at um, IGV as yeah as an external display application, but you could also look at um, the code for OpenSea Dragon is right there too, right? And that's okay. that's pretty similar to what you're going to want to do. But it, it sounded like Jeremy has an example somewhere, yeah. right? So I would just get the one that works for the exact display application you're trying to use for the file type. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks okay. like we've uh, we've hit one o'clock. So um, thanks for presenting. That was a great conversation. Um, hopefully, hopefully, great things come from this. And uh, thanks everyone for showing up.
Yeah, thank you very much for the for all the pointers and, and information. I I think you you may hear back from us at some point, um, whether it works or not. <laughs> and yeah, thank you again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.